Today we're going to use an old router to create a Wi-Fi bridge using OpenWare Tay. And why is that? Because during COVID we built this nice office for my wife, but it doesn't have a network connection. So we're gonna fix that today. This is gonna work a lot better, won't it? Yes. At the back of uh, any router, you'll find a reset button. That's also true for the TP-Link. Often you, it's a small hole you need to put a pin through. In this case, it's a, it's a regular button. So we're gonna press it for a few seconds so it will reset. It's most likely something from five to 10 seconds. So let's do 10 seconds in this case. It's resetting, I think, because it's flashing. Plug in the ethernet connection. And now let's see what happens. Like this. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is unplug that router because you want your IP address from your basic router and not from the router you've just reset it. This is so we have an internet connection because we need to download OpenWRT first. Uh, we go to the OpenWRT website and under downloads you can find the firmware selector. So uh, I've got a TP-Link 1043 uh, and uh, I'm running hardware version 2, which is this one. Uh, but you can select your modem or router of choice. And then you've got two options. The first one is a sys upgrade. You use a sys upgrade if you're already running OpenWRT and want to upgrade to the latest version. Or you download the factory image. The factory image is used to replace the existing operating system in your router, which is what we want. So we click download and then we download the file here. Um, now that we've got this, it's time to plug in the router again. For some of us it might be impossible to use the Ethernet connection because our computer doesn't support it or our laptop doesn't support it. But if you reset your router it often also starts sending out its original Wi-Fi signal. So you can also connect via Wi-Fi. And once the router is plugged in or you're connected to the Wi-Fi signal, you should be getting a new IP address. Uh, in my case, the uh, IP address I got is 153 and the default gateway, that's the place where your motor, modem router is at, is 0.1.1, uh, so I'm serving to 192.11. I'm already running OpenWRT on this device, but we're gonna act as if I'm not. Every OS you're running on your router will have an option to upgrade its firmware and that's what we're gonna do. And in this case, we're gonna flash a new image, which is the one we just downloaded. And now we can upload the file. Force upgrade. And now the uh, downloaded firmware will be flashed into your modem router and once it reboots, it will be running the latest version. Check the recording. One of the ways you can check if your device is already back if, is to run ipconfig. Right now it has an IP address, but it might be that the device isn't reacting. You can send a ping message to it. And if you press the minus T, it will keep on pinging the device until it's available. In this case, it says it's already available again. So let's test that in a new tab. Uh, it's saying it's an unsafe connection and that's because it's forcing a secure connection, but it doesn't have a, a signed certificate for that. That's totally okay because the connection will be secure. So we can proceed to it. And now we are in to the OpenWare Tay um, a login page, you don't need to set up a password. It also says it isn't set up yet. So now we've got the new firmware running in the uh, your modem router, which is great because now we can set it up as a Wi-Fi bridge. What is a Wi-Fi bridge? Basically a Wi-Fi bridge takes the existing Wi-Fi connection, captures it and then creates a local network based on that network connection. Uh, when is it useful? Most laptops, don't have a very strong Wi-Fi connection and some of the connections you have at other places will be connected via Ethernet and won't support Wi-Fi at all. Um, so if you want a stronger signal, a better connection, and a more stable connection, a Wi-Fi bridge is very useful. Basically the Wi-Fi bridge replaces the cable and other than that it starts acting like an extension of your network. We'll now try to set it up. 
So the first thing we're going to want to do is give it a static IP address. You, as you saw in, uh, in my network configuration, my default IP addresses, my, uh, my network gives out, is in the 10.1 range. Um, you want to have a different address range. So for example, for me, it could be 9.1 range. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give it an IP address outside of this existing range we're already using. For this, we're going to network and interfaces. You'll see the LAN interface and we can edit it. And we can say we want it to uh, have a static IP address, which is did IP address. We want it to have a default subnet mask and you're going to be okay. The second thing we're going to want to do is disable DHCP. DHCP is the thing giving out IP addresses, but since we're going to extend it like a bridge, we want our main router to be the device giving out the IP addresses and not this one. So the second thing we're going to do is we're going to ignore this interface and save it. And now it's going to stop giving out IP addresses. Two other things you can do, but you aren't obligated to do. But one of the things you can do is set up your uh, gateway address. That's the main address of the main device giving out IPs. And in the advanced settings, you can adjust uh, the DNS server. The DNS server is the device translating, for example, www.google.nl or .com to an IP address. And one of the open uh, DNS servers you can use is 8.8.8.8, .8 which is the one from uh, Google. Now that we've done this, it's time to connect this device to the existing uh, Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna go to wireless and we're gonna scan for wireless, existing wireless connections. In my case, the wireless network is called Sun and I can join that network. I do have to give in the uh, WPA key, uh, which I'm gonna do off camera. Make sure that the operating frequency is the same and the channel and the width is the same as the device you're connecting to. Uh, that's to make sure that the network connection is gonna be stable. And now we can click save. We can remove the existing uh, OpenVRT interface and we can then click save and apply and all the changes will be applied. Don't remove this interface if you're connected wirelessly, of course. Uh, we can remove this interface we're, because we're connected via the network cable, but if we aren't, we aren't gonna be able to reach the device again if you are connected via Wi-Fi and remove the wireless interface. Uh, what we need to do now is connect the two interfaces we have, the wireless and the LAN interface. And for that, we need to create a bridge. Um, we can add a new interface here, a relay bridge. And we need to select as a protocol relay bridge, because as we can see, it's currently not present. And that's because relay D isn't installed yet. Now, Relay D isn't called Relay D anymore in uh, OpenVRT 21. Um, but if you go to System and Software, you can check which packages are available. And we need to look for Lucy Proto Relay. Let's first update the list to see which packages are there. And now we can find Lucy Proto Relay and install it. This is to create the Relay D pseudo bridge. This is where the power of OpenVRT really comes in. These software packages is what makes this operating system for your modem router so unique. As we can see, if we go to the installed plugins, we can see Proto Relay is installed. And now that that's done, we do need to reboot the device so it becomes operational. After the reboot, we can go to Network, Interfaces. We can now create a new interface, which is called the Relay Bridge, and select Relay Bridge to create the interface. We need to connect the LAN and the WAN interface. And in the firewall settings, we need to connect them both as well. DHCP should be turned off, and we can now save this and apply this. We can remove the access uh, one uh, interfaces, which are still there. Click save and apply. And basically we're done now. And to test this, we can now disable the network, the Wi-Fi network, disconnect from it. And it should now get a uh, IP address from the... Uh, via its bridge. 
One thing that's good to know is that you can now reach this device via its one IP. So this is the IP address of the device. So anything connected to your network will now be able to still reach this web interface on this new IP it's gotten from your existing modem router. So for some reason, my computer wasn't able to reach the network via the OpenVRT device. So I rebooted my PC and now you can see that I'm not able to connect to IP 1.1 anymore, which should be the case. Um, you can also see that I am connected to a network, so it seems to be working and I'm not connected to Wi-Fi anymore. So if I'm right, we should now have an internet connection via our new bridge, which is the case. So it's working. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you're able to reuse your old hardware as well. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers.